subject of prosperity which I believe everyone that is rational we want to have prosperity is a good thing and when you are rational you will know how to use it very well I declare that the Almighty God will restore every incarcerated mentality and brain in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That our mind will be sound. Amen. Amen. And use the prosperity of God according as He wants us to use it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week I thought in the conversation of Jesus and the rich man. The rich man asked Jesus, what do I need to do to make heaven? And Jesus answered him. Matthew 19, verse 21 to 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, Go and say that thou hast, and give to the poor, 
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. And that was the answer that this young man was looking for to get to heaven. The God has already blessed him here on earth. Because right from his childhood, he has learned how to obey the word of God. He said everything that the law required in Pentateuch, he has been doing it. And also God has been faithful unto his word in the life of that man. Therefore, God bless him with a lot of substance, materially. And he was so rich, according to what Jesus find out, and that every one of us are learning from the story of this man, is that the substance that God has given to him became an entrance for him to enter into the kingdom of God. That is heart desire. And it would be foolish for anybody to ask for to know to ask for things or to want to know something and they tell you that this is the answer, and then you are not ready to abide. I believe this man, as much as he wants to miss heaven, he could not let go the blessing that God has given him. And I said that. True children of God seek the giver, not the blessing. And it will make sense if every one of us is on the same page that we seek the giver of the gift, lest the gift that we receive from God become an hindrance unto us to be in the presence of God. Jesus go for thy say, according to story, but when the young man had that saying, what is required to make heaven, the Bible says, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I said unto you, that a rich man shall handily enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the destruction that the materialism bring into the life of man or riches that bring into the life of man if the person is not sound in the mind and love God from his heart, it will be distracted. Because there is a lot of load and burden that you will carry. And as much you shift your focus from the giver to the gift. I pray the Almighty God will give out unto us wisdom Amen. to understand the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone that look away from God after he or she receive the blessing from God, hallelujah, Amen. is doing his or herself a disservice. Wisdom, call for everyone to obey God and follow his leading. Wisdom called for you to follow the leading 
of the Almighty God. Because divine prosperity is more than wealth. What did I say? Divine prosperity is more than wealth. It is something that is called holistic abundance, something that completes, interwoven. You can't separate it. It move from one grace to another grace. I pray the Almighty God will grant unto all this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. It go from the spiritual to the physical. And then it go to your emotion. Look. If Shadrach and Meshach want to look at their emotion before the furnace, they would have answered and bowed down. But they didn't let their emotion to overflow when they say, Ah, I'm going to die. They say, No. We rather obey the word of God. The Bible says, After the incident, the king that said, I don't know that God. Mm. The Bible said, He himself confessed that these men are servants of the living God. These were not pastors. Do you understand? But the king changed them from Shadrach, Mr. Dad. He called them servants of the living God. And he, he changed his mind. He said, You have made me. To change my word. He said, because these people they choose not to serve other God apart from their God. And then he commanded that nobody should speak anything against their God. Somebody clap for say that if that is what we call divine something that involves God this the Bible say <coughs> according to the conventions of the king he said we put three men in the furnace how come that we are seeing four men in the furnace and the image of the fourth person is like the son of the living God Somebody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He has confessed that he doesn't want to know God and he doesn't know about God, but within a few minutes, he saw God and confessed by his mouth. Let me tell you, if your focus is on God, soon you will change the mind and the mouth of the people around you. Let me tell you how the word of man is. The man word, he move from the left, to the right. It is you that will make their word to agree with what you want them to say. If you want people to talk good about you, what do you need to do? Begin to do good. And good is expected from everyone that know God. Because the reflection of your good you are giving the image that God is in you. And everybody that see good attracts to good. And they want good as well. And then you begin to extend the good. And that is why when Jesus Christ was here, he was moving from one place to another. The Bible says doing good. In all manner of diseases. And he said you are the light of the world. He said, you are the salt of the world. Meaning that you should light your circumference. You should sweeten your circumference. And declare the Almighty God, we grant unto you that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then, divine blessing, go into your physical. You go to your health, your well-being. And there are many of examples that we can find in the scripture concerning divine prosperity. I'm going to only mention two people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One of them, we can see Abraham. 
And God called him. It wasn't happy when God called him was an angel worshiper. But the good thing about Abraham is that he obeyed. When he hear the voice of God, he obeyed. And what will change you from idol worshiping for pursuing substance, for attaching to materialism, is this ability to obey the word of God as a son to you. Because God is speaking to you through his words today. My son, my daughter, this is what I require from you. This is what I want you to do, and this is what I forbid you not to do. You must obey him. Like Abraham, he obeyed. And then he gets to a time when he gets to that place. Hallelujah. Amen. Things were tough. But this man had the ability to change, to repent, and to do the will of God. And that grace is upon you. That is why I pray for you today. No matter how you have messed up, it at all. The Almighty God will give you the ability to say, God, I am sorry. Amen. I'm here to repent, and I'm here to continue to obey your word. Amen. That is what we call the same blessing. There is something that we call so messes of David. God say, even your children, when they have sinned, if they come back to their senses and ask for forgiveness, they say, I will forgive them. I declare that mercy will be upon you. Amen. Amen. Do you know it is a mercy that you receive? When you say, have somebody that is telling you, you are, that's what you are doing is wrong. Mm. Don't, don't do that again. It's wrong. When you have somebody that is telling you that, you have received great mercy from God. Because other people do it, nobody to condemn them. And they will continue like that until they are perished. Bible calls some of these people son of perdition. People that are not ready to, to change. That will not be your lot. Amen. If anyone wants to receive the favor of God, that person should be sorrowful of his wrongdoing and ready to change for better so that God Almighty will have mercy on him. For he gives mercy to the humble. I declare the Almighty God will grant unto you mercy in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me look at, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 13. Verse 1 to 4. And Abraham went up out of Egypt. You are going out of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Do you understand? That is materialism. Hallelujah. Amen. He went to Egypt Hallelujah. It's not that it was Egypt that God sent him. Hallelujah. Amen. God sent him to the land of Canaan. He said, in this land, dwell there, I've given you everywhere. That is the where I allocate for you. But after he got there, there was little famine. And he said, oh, there is abundance in Egypt. Let me go to Egypt. And Egypt, he found himself with all because they follow him. Anywhere he goes, Lord and his wife, they follow him. Do you understand? Yeah. As a leader, that you have people attached to you. Anywhere you go to war, they follow you. I, think, I declare, you are following me to our promised land. Yeah. 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 You as the head of your family, you take your family to your promised land. Amen. You as you, you are going to promised land. Amen. You will not go to where God did not say in Jesus. Amen. But... As a man, he went, and God was with him. 
And he, he found out that Egyptians were ungodly people. And Sarah was so beautiful. So he, he, he used wisdom, a man wisdom. He said, please, for your sake, so that these people will not kill me. When we get to Egypt, tell them you are my sister. In theology school, they say that is what not a lie. Because truly, it was his uh, sister. He was just afraid, nah, afraid of his life. So, but a lie is a lie. Could have just say, "This is my sister and my wife." But people love to hear the sister rather than because they say, "Okay, he can marry his sister." So, well, we leave that one for the theology to solve. <laughs> I'm not in the class. Hallelujah. So, anyway. He got there and told them. And the wife said, the, the wife of Leech, and of course. But the Bible, because the friend of God was going with Abraham. I'm talking about divine blessing, right? Mm -hmm. he, 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 he make the king of Egypt to terrorize. Because they were very, very bad for them, even in the dream. That he called Abraham. What is wrong? You are, this one is not your sister. It is your wife. Why do you tell me that your sister? So anybody could have just slept with your wife. And you will have been problem upon us. Please. Go. Take your wife. Don't bring us trouble. And he command the people of Egypt to bless him. And they bless him with a lot of substance. So he came back from Egypt, and he's coming back to where God asked him. It's certainly the first place that he went. When God asked him to there, but he was coming down with war, a lot of blessings. So he went out there with gold, with silver, hallelujah, Amen. with cattle. Now, one thing that the headsmen love is that they want the grass. We are their cattle with grace. When there is no rain, there is a trouble for the grass to grow. Perhaps there was a little family, but God know how to provide for his own without using your own mentality. That is why I love this scripture. It's so plain. It will reveal your weakness, your mistake, your fault, and it will commend you for what you have done right and the book of God was not around. That is why the Bible is not a fiction. It's true. To help you to learn better. If you find, your, if you find yourself in that situation, so that you can know that that is not the end of your life. I want you to pray to somebody by your side saying, my brother, <laughs> this situation that you are, is not the end of your life. God is taking you higher. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, he has material things. The Bible says, and he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel. Unto the place where he turned at being at the beginning. Between Bethel and I, unto the place of the altar, which is why I pray for everyone in this show. God will take you back to the altar. Amen. Amen. That is where God wants you to be. The Bible says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of God, there are places. God wants you to back to the altar. Which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. God wants you to call on his name. Call unto me. And I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So material thing is one of the blessings that attach to somebody that have Define prosperity is not all things. It go all round through. And that blessing, I pray God will do for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Define prosperity isn't solely about money or possession. It's a compass spiritual growth 
emotional growth, physical growth, mentality growth. Hallelujah. Amen. Three John. Third John chapter two, uh, chapter one, and third John verse two. Bible says, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I will that you prosper in all things, and be in earth just as your soul will prosper." The fact prosperity is internal, lasting beyond this life. People that make effort at last, I tell you, those are the people that are actually really prosper. People that will make effort at last, they are the ones that enjoy this prosperity that I'm talking about. Because their prosperity is beyond this life. And that is why the Lord I told that man, sell everything, come and follow me, because he is the gate to heaven. So that he can follow him and we get there. And listen to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Iscariot was one of the 12 disciples that, supposed, that was working with Jesus Christ on earth. That's supposed to make heaven. But it did this material thing that hindered him not to be there. So if your focus is only on the material thing, maybe money. Like for example, it was money for Iscariot was money. And that money in the hand. And he couldn't make it. And when we go to the realm of the physical, let's look at brother Esau. His own was food. Porridge. He could not, he could not, he didn't follow the promise of God. He couldn't follow his destiny. He just eat the porridge. The brother said, I will give you for it. Don't give me your right. your battery uh, right. And he said, he said, what what? I'm hungry. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the uh, battery. Right. Take the brother from me and give me porridge. And he did it. Do you understand? So emotion, things, circumstances can hinder you. But I pray it will not hinder you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will be worse than the enemy. Amen. So. Pro, eternal, the divine prosperity is more than this life. It goes beyond. And then it covers many aspects of your life. Your physical life, your spiritual life, your financial life, your relationship. Your relationship. People that could not stay, hallelujah, Amen. with their spouse. Hallelujah. It is a is a big problem. When God gives you a good husband, a good wife, you can't keep them. Most divorces, as a result, they can't keep what God has blessed them with. God bless you with a good, handsome husband. You are using me anyhow, disrespecting me anyhow. Soon you will lose him to the crowd that is outside. I'll give you a very beautiful wife. You are abusing her. Soon you will lose her. Do you understand? Because divine prosperity help your relationship. You will know how to talk to your spouse. You will know how to relate with somebody that God has given unto you. True prosperity bring no grief, no pain, no sorrow. No trouble. You will live your life in ease. Do you understand? Have you read in the record of Abraham that Abraham was abusing his wife? Hello? Hi. Or Sarah was abusing her whole husband? No. The Bible even make reference. Hallelujah. Amen. Unto Sarah, that she was actually calling her husband Lord. How many women can do that in our days today? Hallelujah. Amen. Before we started hearing calling their own husband, when their emotions take care of them, with cost name. I'm a go Lori Buruku. I'm a go Olosi. 
Who put that kind of voice, that kind of word into your mouth? It's the devil. You don't call your your husband with a negative name when you're angry. Because the devil wants you to do that. But divine blessings of God will, know, will teach you that I can't do that to my loved one. These are the, somebody that you love. You don't wish evil. And of course, that is not what you wish. But the emotion took over of you and started raining curses. Some people even raining curses on their own children. When they are, when they are angry. When the emotion took part of them. I declare today the Lord will liberate you. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you go all around your life. If you don't understand this subject, people that you're supposed to be enjoying, they will become things of pain to you. From now, you will not live your life in obscurity anymore in Jesus. Yeah. Divine prosperity bring inward form of spiritual life. The word of God increase in your stock. You will have spiritual treasure that move you forward in a uh, uh, purpose way. Your soul will seek the kingdom of God and the glory of God. Grace and earth are two Rich companion. He said, he must increase in my life. Grace will improve your health. Health will employ grace into your life. It is my prayer that God prosper all those who have prosperous soul, that they may have healthful body. In the name of Jesus. So that their grace can shine longer. And I will explain that to you. In the realm, of the activities that God want them to, to go through. In other words, when God bless you and your act is good, you are enjoying the blessings of God and you have a good act. There are assignments that God has given to you for you to do so that you can do it well. So that people can be blessed through the blessing that God has given to you. You can help humanity by your side. That is why I pray that the Almighty God will give you a long life. Amen. Amen. And prosperity in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, my dear beloved, love the truth. Understand the truth. Obey the truth. And do the truth that you know. And you'll be free from all guilt from all condemnation that the devil whispers to you. The moment you overcome the devil's suggestion in your mind, that moment you have become victorious on that temptation. And the grace to do more, God will grant unto you in the future. Amen. That is how it works. John chapter 1, 3-4. to four. He said, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. This is a procedure. He said, He had that the church, the brethren were walking in the truth. He said, He had no joy more than that. And the joy of every pastor is that all his members walking in the truth, doing the truth, because it's the truth that can set you free. And this is the word of Christ. The Bible says, even the apostle and the, the, the Jew that believe, the Bible says, Jesus Christ told them that they should continue in his doctrine, that they should not relent. He said, You shall know the truth, and the truth will, work, will make you free. As you listen to this message, my dear beloved, I want you, please, to open your mind and your heart to the Word of God. Don't hide anything from God. He knows it anyway. Just open to Him, say, God, 
I just want you more alive. And if you have made mistake, confess, and He will forgive, and He will for, and 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 He will forgive you. He doesn't want people that love the truth. John chapter eight, verse and he say, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what shall make you free. The truth that you know, know, and you begin to do it, will automatically will set you free. So how do we get there? As I go to this teaching, there is something I want to open your mind onto. If you want divine prosperity, it comes naturally upon the righteous and is written in our text. And the wise person will pay good attention to what it will help him to get it. And that is you doing what is right. And here is what the teacher say. The Bible say in our text, Psalm 5 verse 12. What does it say? Psalm 5 verse 12. It say, For thou, thou Lord, Lord, will bless, bless the righteous. Now righteous means you are doing the right thing. He said God will bless them. And then you go for that. With favor, without compassion, as with a shield. And that was why you see that favor was going with Abraham everywhere he goes. Do you understand? And favor will go with you in as much as you intend to do righteous. There is no record of you. Go and look at the uh, go and look at the record of Abraham. No record of evil at all. Do you understand? No record of evil. And God is expecting that from you. He wants to do something that is right. He wants to do something that is just. He wants to fight for the truth. And that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Don't encourage evil. Don't, come, don't, come, don't walk with the ungodly. Do what is right. And God is saying, yes, my favor will be going with you everywhere you go. It's going to make every crooked place straight for you. So the key word in this teaching of divine prosperity is for you to be righteous so that you can attach divine prosperity into your life. It's just as simple as that. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. The Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph. There is another person that I want to. And there was no record of evil until this one too. No record of evil unto him. The more the people were eating him, the more favor of God was vindicating him and helping him. I declare that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph, we is not what you need and I need. The Bible says, and he was a prosperous man. It was a pro if you get to heaven, you will find Joseph there. Do you understand? His own blessing, apart that God blessed the end on earth, physically, it was also blessed in the heaven. And the Bible says, it was in the house of his master, the Egyptians. <laughs> Do you understand? Even the Bible says, Hallelujah. Amen. Potiphar actually knew that this one, he has come into my house. The blessings of God is with him. He make him leader. He, give, he, com he committed all his house unto him. He said, everything, be in charge, be the manager. And that was why, when Mrs. Postiver came to come and uh, have an affair with him, he said, I can't do that because you are the only one that my master did not give me permission to touch. Everything else, whatever I say, is the final. He said, I cannot do this. He said, it's a wickedness. And then I was saying against God. This is how you know that this man was taught in his father's house. 
So the key to your divine prosperity is righteousness. So that God can be with you and prosper you in everything you do. Now, when God is with you, it doesn't matter where you are located. You will be attracted with divine prosperity. As, even as I'm saying now, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anywhere you are in the world, if you are doing the right thing, prosperity of God will attach to you. Do you know that righteous exalted nation? When you call third world, people that you call third world is as a result of their inability to do the truth. To be righteous. To be accountable. Do you understand? Ah, when you say, oh, this country is not good, go and check the people. It is, every land is good. Do you understand? If God, <laughs> you know, let's say for Africa now, I don't know any other continent that is as more rich, as beautiful as Africa. In weather, in the land, in water, uh, eh? uh, you know, everything. But what about the ability of the people to be able to govern it right? That is what we are lacking. No, people can, you know, you know, you know, no, and people, that's a problem. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what little friend I was saying here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you hire somebody in Nigeria to come and work for you, hallelujah. Amen. The person may actually may want to bankrupt the company. Do you understand? Because of his selfishness. Hallelujah. Amen. They, there's no sign man to think that if this company closes, I will have off job. Do you understand? Okay. And a lot of people, they have not, they have not even on their own feet yet. They say the company do not pay me enough. So what they will do is to bankrupt that company and go somewhere else and go and bankrupt it again. Do you understand? They put you in a store. They started stealing the properties of the of the of the company. They put you in the in a department. You start supplanting your boss, and you have not even know what to do. There's all kind of problem everywhere because people do not have a sound mind. Do you understand? I declare every corrupt mind shall be destroyed in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, I come to this that it doesn't matter where you are located. Either you are in America, or you are in Africa, or you are in Asia, in as much as you have a sound mind, you will prosper. You will. In as much as you are ready to obey the truth, you will prosper. Now, prosperity does not mean Hallelujah. Amen. I want to switch your focus. Does not mean that I, I gather million dollars. Now, now, if you want to gather that one million dollars, you can't even you can people that are with my experience, I already know that people that want to gather millions of dollars, they don't they don't actually get it. You understand? They don't get it. But they struggle. Do you understand? Because if you compete with somebody that you don't know the source of his weight, you will run and run and run and die. So, let me tell you something. Do exactly what God has given you the ability to do and be at the altar of God to give you favor. Favor! So that the little you have, you will be content with it. The little you have, you are content with it. The Bible says before God, 
is a great gain. Now those people that are looking to be rich and rich and rich, the Bible says because they are pursuing their riches, they had to their life sorrow. Sorrow. Do you understand? And the, the all because you want to be rich, you go and get a loan that you cannot sleep in your own house. I don't see any wisdom in that. Is there any wisdom in that? No. Nobody is pursuing you. You are the one that is pursuing yourself. Do you understand? All because you want to look good. You go and buy a shoe. A shoe for a thousand dollars. A thousand bucks. You will, because you want to look good. You go to where they are selling suits. You go and buy a suit for five hundred dollars. Do you understand? You can't compare yourself with somebody that have a million dollars in his account. Hallelujah. Amen. All this thing is a matter of the mind. I'm going to close very soon and then I'll continue next week. When I came to this country, I started working at McDonald's. My Hourly rate was six dollar fifteen cent. Do you understand? My three week pay for the first week I can't, I can't forget was three hundred and thirty three dollar. So I round up my tithe and my offering to forty dollar. So I pay forty dollar. I calculated that money. That was like four thousand naira. So I dance. I get to the front. I go back. I dance very well. I, I put my offering there. Do you know that from I never remember that I lack anything. I never remember. I was just happy. Fifteen dollar. And from there, God took me to another company. They raised my money. And from there, it's a story right now. And what I do is that each time I get paid, I remove my tithe. That is a, you, you can't touch that. It's a confidence with me and my God. You can't touch that with me. And I pay. Remove offering. And God's favor was always they are with me. And then you open my mind. Invest on this. Invest on that. I didn't suddenly just, I'm not, I don't think I'm here for maybe one, one year, one and a half month before I bought my house, my first house. First house. In this big street. I was still working. Maybe I was getting $12 an hour. Twelve dollar an hour. Twelve dollar an hour. I bought a house. I'm my record of my tithe in my church. You can check it. In that. How do I do that? If you ask me how do I do that, I have no idea. But people. And we are asked a lot of people. Hallelujah. Amen. Want the same thing? Get more money. Work three jobs. I've never worked two jobs since I'm in this country. Never, never worked two jobs. Okay? But there is nothing to sow for rich. I, I, for me, if you ask me to explain, I couldn't explain. Do you understand? Last year, you know, the economy wasn't really good. Do you understand? But when I checked the record of my giving, it was much more than the previous years. How do I do that? I don't know. But when we need, God provide. When we need, when we have need, God provide. And I attach to that God's favor. And that favor also has been with you as well. 
It's not only limited to me. He has been with you as well. He has been with you since you were born to this world. There are many people that you are born together, you, but, but your own story is better than they. If you think about it very well, you find out that mm, this is the favor of God. And God is expecting you again to reprioritize your priority that is the one that has been helping you thus far. He's the one that will continue to help you. But his own help is not only limited to this world, he wants you to transfer your head to your way to antenna. So that is why, my brother, my sister, I employ you today. I encourage you today. Stand on that faithfulness of God that God has never failed you. And is there anything that you need? I'm telling you, the right way to do it to get it is for you to attach and focus on to Him and do what He asks you to do. Don't allow any suggestion that is out of the will of God to hinder the blessing that God has purpose for you. And by the grace of God, where God locates you, your own blessing, you will say it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us stand up on our feet. And let us talk to God. That in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Is there anything in my life? Anything in my family? Anything in this church that I want to serve as interest to your blessing in my life. Holy Spirit of the living God, remove it in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to remove if there are anything that may serve as in in your life to experience the bad blessing that the Lord might will take them away. And in Jesus' name we are praying. Let now. I, let, look at me. I believe brother bring that testimony to speak a lot of volume to many of us. Do you understand? That is why I said, look, I pray the Almighty God will grant us all wisdom. There are things that you can't say physically until the need come. People at the need the other day. When that need come, that God will work, we will God will just solve that problem for you. You understand? You will not know how, for example, now, let's say, that it's just a question now. You, you have a need to spend a million dollars now. If I, if I tell you that it's a million dollars that you need to spend now, some of you say, I, we are, I, I, can I, I, I can't get it. Do you understand? I, where am I going to find it? Eh? Okay. Somebody that rely, that have no other, or you don't have any other way than to rely on God. When that need comes, you will find miraculously that God meet that need for you. That is exactly what I'm talking about. When you look around and you find out uh, you can't do this, I don't have the power, and yet, that is when God says, yes, you need me, I will so forth. So that all the glory and pray we work will belong to him. But when you have the money in your bank account and they say you need that money, oh, you, you say, okay, I have it. But when you don't have it, and God miraculously help you, then you know that, ah, this God is real. God, you are good. And I know that God has done one or two things in your life that will take you back to him. Say, God, I trust you and you never fail. God don't fail anybody. So that is why all your efforts, hallelujah, Amen. to make it in life without him, it will be nothing. By Jesus Christ, without me, you can't do nothing. nothing. I declare the Almighty God will open our understanding. Amen. Somebody say, from now and onward. Give me the grace. Give me the 
So I'm not your wall. Open your mouth in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give every one of us the grace of Lord to know what I do. Bear in your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My Santa Cala by you. In the name of Jesus. Lay my son to you, Libaha. Takala ye le ba kusun to ye le ba ha. In the name of Jesus Christ, that unto every member of this church, O Lord, to obey Your word, to do Your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, la masanta kala ba ye le. In the name of Jesus Christ, and in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Of course, we know that without God. There's nothing that we can do. But there is this mindset that we want to hinder you from accessing divine prosperity. That is the inability to obey the word of God. It has always been the problem of man. That man finds it very difficult to obey divinity. Especially something that concerns physical. You want to pray for the Spirit of God. That the Lord will help your mind. It will help your heart. To do the will of God. From now on onward. Let us pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let my heart obey your way. In the name of Jesus. Every mind and the heart of all the Lord in the name of Jesus. So shall you be. And in Jesus' name, we are praying. Stretch forth your hand. Lord, again, we have come to your presence. We don't have any other person apart from you. We know that you are the one that brought us here thus far. We are not saying without you. We need your help, Lord, to access your divine blessing. We no only need money. We no only need wealth. We not only need healing. But we want completion. Complete. Perfection. Of your divine blessing. Both in the realm of the physical. In the realm of the spiritual, in our emotion, in our earth. Grant unto us in that mighty name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need you to help us to do your will. If it for you to force us to do your will, people like Saul of Tarsus, you appear unto him. He says, Saul, I am the one that you are persecuting. And you help him to understand that it is you that is fighting against. Is there anyone that is fighting in his mind against your will? Uh, can I do this? I don't want to do this. Father, I declare by the message of you, Lord, that from now on onward, you grant unto each and every one to overcome that mindset in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. The grace to be your own children. The Bible says, as many as receive him, you give them power to become the sons of God. You want to become your true son, legitimate son. In all application, obey your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Our hand has spread to you. We want you to drop into our hand the key of obedience. Amen. The key to be righteous. Amen. And the key to be holy. Yes. 
Grandma to in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. As we are going this week, go with us, Lord. Amen. Reign and rule and have your way. Amen. Amen. When we shall come back with all our brethren next week, Father, put testimony in our mouth. Amen. Amen. For the glory of the Father, Amen. of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I pray for as many as our brethren that could not make it today. I remember them. Father, pray for them as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our sons and daughters that came. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship your holy name. Hallelujah. Let your grace continue to be with them. Amen. Say to them. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the journey mercy of our brother. Thank, thank you, Lord. May your name be glorified. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we cover all our prayer with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. I pray for all the leaders of every department. That the Almighty God will exalt your home. Amen. And I pray for every worker. This week we are coming again on Saturday for another impartation of your word to help us in this assignment this year. I pray for strength and grace for all worker in the name of Jesus. Amen. That Lord, as we Assign a work, Lord, to do for you in your house. That you grant unto each and every one of us the ability to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be unto that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship your holy name. Hallelujah. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, Lord, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our anchor. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Amen. Shout the big hallelujah. Hallelujah.